I'm a huge fan of Tony Robbins. And a yeah. few years ago, I went to Unleash the Power Within. And when he was speaking about the uh, the six values that, mm. that he believes everyone has, and, and I've yeah. really grabbed onto it. And, you know, they be, we all fall into a certain camp, but there's certainty. People just are addicted to certainty. There's variety. You know, he says if everybody had to eat the exact same sandwich every single day for 10 years, they would want varieties of spice of life. So no some question. people are really drawn to certainty. Some people are really drawn to variety. Some people are drawn to connection. Some people are drawn to significance. And then yeah. he has two others, contribution and growth, which are kind of, he calls the values of the soul. Hmm. But you reminded me of is specifically when he's in the States, and I think yeah. it changes from culture to culture, but when he's in the States and he asks the stadium of 14 or 15,000 people to raise their hands for which value they find themselves currently drawn to most, something like 50 or 60% raise their hands for certainty. I know, yeah. I know I did that. That was yeah. certainty and significance. Yeah. The things that it's like, I want to be really significant and I want to feel important. Yeah. I want recognition, but I don't really want to risk anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so as you continue right. to say time after time, how uncertain the future is, how uncertain our control over things are, how uncertain it is, how can yeah. we get more comfortable with uncertainty? How can we hunt discomfort when it yeah. comes to all of the unpredictability that exists? Yeah. Well, I, I would draw again on uh, some of the things that Paul Tillage says, you know, and if you look, I, I think moments are important, right? Like we live lives, but it's the moments that really stand out to us. And if we look for a moment where we were really inspired, you know, if you've got a moment for yourself back through your life, could be recently, could be a long time ago. Like when were you really authentically moved and inspired? And how would you characterize that moment? Right. Was it, is it love? Is it joy? Is it affinity? Is it gratitude? Like what is that human experience for you and label it? Not so much that the labels matters. It's the human experience in that moment that matters. And as you can bring that experience, call on that experience, cultivate that experience in the hardest of times, it starts to alleviate it, right? If you bring joy, like a real experience of joy, not the idea of joy, but an experience of joy into some uncertainty about your business, what happens? Or if you bring gratitude, real experience of gratitude into a tough relationship or a tough conversation with your significant other, what happens, right? And that's how you start to uh, hunt that discomfort by alchemizing the ultimate concern, the love, the joy, the gratitude with the specific discomforts that you have. Does that make sense? It's, it's, the, it's the carrot, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of people struggle with money and they struggle yep. with, especially entrepreneurs with, with charging enough. Uh, yep. they're, they're for some reason they're comfortable like being the lowest paid in the company or never hitting their goals or never hitting the wealth levels that they want to hit. Yeah. Or they're and not yet, comfortable with it. They're just living with it. They're, 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 right. just, they're just putting up with it. Yeah. And, and yet if you really break down your, your value system or your relationship or your understanding of money, uh, most of the time it, it just comes back to, to the self-worth. I want and, to be enough. And, and exactly. And so, yeah. uh, you know, putting yourself out there and <laughs> charging <laughs> what, what you think you're worth yeah. calls into question, well, what if they say no? What if yeah. they think they're not good enough? What yeah. if I go down the path and they're disappointed? Yeah. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And so we just, we don't want to put ourselves on that ledge. We don't want to risk it. We don't want to make it happen. And instead, we just kind of settle for the results that we have. Right. Yeah. And it takes a lot to do that because just putting it out there like, oh, I'm going to charge X thousands of dollars for a uh, speaking engagement. Well, if you don't actually believe that you're worth that much, my bet is that that's probably not going to work, at least over time. But if you can shift that underlying belief of who you are, what you're doing and how much it's worth, I guarantee you it'll work. The, the hard part is changing that underlying belief. Is there a simple way we could do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we've we've really been talking about. I know, it, right? We've talked we've talked about it. In yeah, so but let's can, let's can use you give that. me like here are the five ways to do. It. 
<laughs> let's let's use that as an example. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll walk right through the five steps in the book. OK, yeah. so my discomfort that I'm feeling is I don't like being on the phone asking for money. OK, yeah. you found your discomfort. That's step one. Right. Your view about what that means to you is just fundamentally flawed. That's why you're uncomfortable doing it. OK, step two is what I would call get a tattoo. Commit so deeply, there's no going back. So you kind of hold your feet to the fire and say, you know what, I'm going to make 10 calls a day. And in every one of those calls, I'm going to ask for money. And after each one of them, if you really want to get into it, what you're going to start looking at yourself, like, what did I make that mean? Like, what's the core belief? What's the experience that maybe from my childhood that I can recall that I'm fighting against? Because the more you find it, like you get a better opportunity to see it for what it really is. And this is going to be very, very uncomfortable for you. If you're like many, you're going to do this for two or three days and then be like, eh, I'm out. That's where the third step comes in, which I call build a street gang. Surround yourself with people that are going to do many things for you. But most importantly, in this example, is they're going to hold you accountable. They're going to make sure that every day you're making these phone calls. The fourth step is somewhat applicable here. I, I call it flip it, right? How can you use your uh, challenges to your advantage? So it might be saying on some of these phone calls, like, hey, frankly, I'm really scared to ask you for money, but I'm committed to growing this business. And I'm committed that you grow your business. So if you're gonna work with me, I'm gonna show you how to do this exact same thing, right? Like take those um things about yourself that you're uncertain of, you're scared of, you don't want to bring out into the world and bring those things out into the world very purposefully. Own it. Right. There's, there's strength there. I can tell you a story about somebody after. Uh, there's strength there if you take the time to find it. And then the fifth step, as you're doing this for days, weeks, maybe even months, you practice surrendering. You practice letting go. And you might do that by journaling, walking in the woods, listening to music, right? You let go of the significance around what making that phone call means and why you're not good enough to do it and ask for it in the first place. And if you do that over and over and over again, you use the system not as like one and done, but this is a way that I'm living my life. You will create this virtuous spiral where you start to get more and more of the results that you want. And some of those people that you're calling in our example here, are going to say yes. And yeah. that's where it starts.